take a moment to greet each other, but you already have, so you can be seated. But we are searching for our B'nai Mitzvah. So is Sydney, I think I saw her right out there. No? All right, well, we will take a moment and sing another nigun while we wait for Sydney. So let's join in. Ya la 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 ya la 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 ya 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 la 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 ya la la Welcome up Sydney and Logan and their families for the kindling of the Shabbat candles on page two in your sea doors.
as these Shabbat candles give light to all who behold, behold them, them, so yeah. may we by our lives give light to all who behold us, as their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled light, so may we in our own day be among those who kindle light. O source of light and truth, creator of the eternal law of goodness, help us to find knowledge by which to live. Lead us to take the words we shall speak into our hearts and lives. Bless all who enter this sanctuary in need, all who bring the offerings of their hearts. May our worship lead us to acts of kindness, peace, and love. Amen. And now we turn to page four. As Ian and Dan lead us in the reading for the Kiddush. Negotiations are taking place as we speak. <laughs> and there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. The heaven and the earth were finished in all their array. On the seventh day, God finished the work that God had been doing. And God ceased on the seventh day from all the work that God had done. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy. Because on it, God ceased from all the work of creation that God had done. of the sweet, maybe too sweet, Sabbath wine, we're going to turn to page 9 in our Siddurs for this reading about the beginning of Shabbat, and we pray together. There are days when we seek things for ourselves and measure failure by what we do not gain. On Shabbat, we seek not to acquire, but to share. There are days when we exploit nature as if it were a horn of plenty that can never be exhausted. On Shabbat, we stand in wonder before the mystery of creation. There are days when we act as if we cared nothing for the rights of others. On Shabbat, we remember that justice is our duty and a better world our goal. So we embrace Shabbat, day of rest, day of wonder, day of peace. And before we continue in song, I just want to introduce a theme to our service. Later in the service, Rabbi Davis will be talking about our Torah portion, Vayera, in which Abraham challenges God about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so we have this theme of not being a bystander, and we open our service with this reflection of Mother Teresa's, who said, I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the waters and create many ripples. We continue in song, Lehuna Ranana, page 12. Lehuna Ranana, la 
Turn now to page 20 to officially welcome the Sabbath bride with the words of Lachadodi. And at our final verse, we will rise and face the entrance to the chapel that we might welcome the bride. <laughs> Adonai Yechah 
remain standing and turn to page 28 for the call to worship. come forward to lead us in the Shema, I want to just say a few words about this prayer called the watchword of our faith, which is on page 34. And I've pointed this out before, but what's so interesting about the way the Shema is written is it has an enlarged ayin and an enlarged dalit. And this is the way it's written in the Torah with those two enlarged letters. And if you put them together, they form the word aid which means witness. And because we're talking about bystanders tonight, I wanted to just share with you this little reading from the Midrash, which says, Rabbi Simeon bar Yachai said, You are my witnesses, says the Eternal, and I am God. When you are my witnesses, I am God. But when you are not my witnesses, I am, as it were, not God teaches us that God depends on us to be God's witnesses in the world, to love God, to support God, and to bear testimony to God in the world. And with that, I invite our B'nai Mitzvah to chant the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Uch 
ותלתם, על מזוזות ביתך ובשעריך. למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי, ליתן קדושים לאלוהיכם. אני אדוני אליכם, אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים להיות לכם לאלוהים. אני אדוני אליכם. Mr. Koach, that was beautiful, both of you. You're off to a rockin' start on this Shabbat. You can be seated. I know you've both prepared for a long time for this, and so have your families, and I know tomorrow will be a blessed day for all of you. We're going to continue on page 39, and we read this responsively. In a world torn by violence and pain, a world far from wholeness and peace, Give us the courage to say, Adonai, there is one God in heaven and earth. The high heavens declare your glory. May earth reveal your justice and love. From bondage in Egypt we were delivered. At Sinai we bound ourselves to your way. Inspired by prophets and instructed by sages, time and again we overcame oppressive forces. Though our failings are many and our faults are great, it has been our glory to bear witness to our God, keeping alive in dark ages your vision of a world redeemed. Let us continue to work for the day when the nations will be one and at peace. Then shall we rejoice as Israel did, singing on the shores of the sea. Micha Mocha, page 40. Micha Mocha Albert Einstein once said, the world is a dangerous place, not because of those who do evil, but because of those who look on and do nothing. Let's read the prayer together at the bottom of page 43. We pray for a sukkat shalom, a shelter of peace, to shelter all of us from harm. Give us a place to rest, Adonai our God. Bring us into shelter in the soft, long evening shadows of your truth. For with you are true protection and safety and in your presence are acceptance and gentle love. Watch over us as we go forth, prepare for us as we return. Spread over us your shelter of peace, over all we love, over our Jerusalem and yours. Baruch Ata Adonai, HaPorez Sukkot Shalom, Aleinu ve'al kol amo Yisrael, ve'al Yerushalayim. We rejoice now together in Shabbat with the words of Yismehu, page 44. Yismehu ve'malechotecha, shomrei, 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 shah. 
Turning now to page 46 for the central prayers of our service, Hat Filah, and we are reminded to pray as if everything depended on God, but to act as if everything depends on us. Adonai Sfatai Tiftach, you may rise. Adonai sefatai tiftach uhufi yagite hilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu velohe avoteinu v'imoteinu. Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Velohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Velohe Leah, Ha'el Hagadol, Hagibor, Vahanora, El Elyon, Gomel Hasadim Tovim, Vekone Hakol, Vezocher Hasde Avot Vehimahot, who may be Geula leave Nevenehem, Lema An Shemo Be Ahava, Melech Hoseher Umoshia Umagain, Baruch Ata Adonai, Magain Avraham Vezrat Sarah, Ata Gibor Leolam Adonai, Michaye Hakola Tarab Lahoshia, Mashiv Haruach Umorid Hagashem, Mechakel Chayim. Bechesed, 
Mechaye ha kola be rachamim rabim, so ho mech no flim vero fe ho ho lim, u martirasuim, u mechaye mehe munato, li she ne afar, mi ha mo ha baal givu rot, u me do mehelach. Melech me mihid u mechaye u mat miach Yeshua v'nemana tala hachayot hakol baruch atah Adonai mechaye hakol atah kadosh shim hakadosh ukadosh shim b'chol yom yahaluha sela. Baruch atah Adonai ha'el ha'kadosh. We continue our prayers silently, either the prayers in the Siddur or the prayers of your heart. And when you're finished, you may be seated. Oh, say shalom be from us. Who are shalom aleinu? Ve al koh Yisrael. Ve imru, imru amen. Yase shalom, yase shalom, shalom. We think now of all of those who are in need of a prayer of healing, whether it's for physical healing or emotional well-being, spiritual well-being, and we're going to pray the words of Misha Berach on page 253 in just a moment. First, I'm going to recite the names of all those who we have been asked to pray on behalf of. Gail Asap, George Lublin, Moshe Ben Cyril Bela Uruvain. Lenny Hecht, Bill Meadow, David Siegel, Judith Ryder Cornelison, Elisa Benray, Muriel Dubrow, Marta Leva, Marilyn Sheffman, Randy and Shirley Aronson, Sylvia Levitsky, Roberta Tai, Vicki Engelman, Sherry Werbin, Richie Harris, Maria Bernard, Gabrielle Desonye, Hannah Sara Bat David, Havalea Bat Hadassah, Bill Jean Smith, Linda Lee, Rachel Batmiriam Umordechai, Ravi Patel, Harriet Pearson, Beth Serbin, Adam Danton, Joe Meltzer, Mark Revo, Annette Pasternak, and Michael Wolk. And if you have a loved one for whom you would like us to pray, I invite you to please rise at this time and share that name with us. Aliva?
We pray on behalf of all of those who we have named, all of those who we carry in our hearts, and we think as well of those Israeli and American soldiers who are still missing in action or being held captive. We recite these words on page 253, words of healing and hope. At the same time as we think of all the ways our world is broken, we also have so much for which to rejoice. And so at this moment, I'm going to call out things, and if they apply to you, please stand up and remain standing. So my first call is for anybody who's here tonight that's new, here for the first time. Please rise so we can welcome you. Welcome to all of you. Anybody who is celebrating a bar or bat mitzvah this weekend, please stand up. Mazel tov to all of you. Do we have any birthdays this week, anniversaries, engagements, new babies, any of those things, please stand up. Last week I was criticized in the receiving line because somebody had two engagements and I didn't call that out, so now I know. Anybody who is planning on voting or already has, please rise. If you're not standing yet, let me say, anybody who's grateful to be alive. We rejoice together in the words of Shehechianu. If you'd like, put your arms around your neighbor so that we can say this prayer of gratitude. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehechianu Vekimanu Vehegianu Lazman Hazeh Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehechianu Sydney, please bring your families up to the ark to open the ark for the Alenu. If there are any children in our congregation, please join us. No, stay standing. Nobody told you to sit down. Please remain standing. Any children, come on up. Join us on the bima as we open the ark and turn to page 282 for the chanting of Alenu. Alenu Shabbat Shalom Hakol, la take into la liot sereshit. Shelo asanu kigoyeha aratzot, velo samanu k. 
למשפחות האדמה, שלא שם חלקנו כהם, וגוררנו ככל המונם. ואנחנו קוראים ומשתחווים ומוטים לפני מלך מלכי המלכים הקדוש ברכו ונאמר והיה אדוני למלך על כל הארץ ביום We turn now to page 294 as we turn our thoughts to those who are no longer physically with us but remain with us eternally in our hearts. First, we recall all those who have died in the last 30 days whose families remain in the shloshim of their mourning. We remember Jose Saban, Isidore Newman, Joseph Carulo, David Moskowitz, and Estelle Haber. Zikronam Livracha, may their memories be a blessing. We think of all those whose yard sites are observed on this Shabbat and whose names have lovingly been inscribed in our alcove of remembrance. We remember Lee Alexander, Fred Bernstein, Joseph Cohen, Mark Fields, Jacob Fink, Lillian Frumkis, Nettie Glasser, Nathan Meyer Goldberg, Adolph Goldberg, Ray Goodstone, Sylvia Gordon, Herman Cantor, Eugene Klein, Yetta Kogan, Mary Komaroff, Morris Kugel, Joseph Lesser, Issy Levy, Herta Mayer, Phyllis Ruth Miller, Nellie Miller, Anna Rosen, Mamie Schachter, Lillian Schustak, Sadie Singer, Sylvia Smith, Fred Summerstein, Alan Stein, Sid Sussman, Dina Vernick, Betty Wand, Lena Weiner, and Ida Wisner. And we recall all those other yard sites that are observed on this Shabbat. Samuel Arkin, Oscar Baseman, Sidney Barron, Gary Basin, Anna Blau, Jean Albert Block, Claire Burkowski, Leo Brody, Hubert Kerson, Jacob Dueck, Bertha Dreyfus, Robert Glenn, Charles Greenspan, Essie Holtz, Benjamin Levin, Joseph Luria, Stephen Makasak, Charles Meadow, Marion Millman, Eleanor Nathan, Maza Rock, Joseph Snitzer, Terry Stafford, Joel Stein, Ellen Steinhardt, Louis Wexler, and Samuel Weinstein. If there's anybody here that is observing a yard site and I did not recite the name of your loved one or you're in a period of mourning, please rise and share that name with us. you please remain standing? Anybody else? I'll invite everybody to please stand and turn to page 294. And as we prepare to recite these words, I'm going to share with you this poem by Martin Niemöller. We think about all of those who died because nobody spoke up for them. First they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for the communists, and I did not speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak out for me. We think 
of all of them as we recite these words. Yit gadal v'yit gadash shemei rabba v'alma divra chirute v'yamlik malchute v'chayechon v'yomechon u'chaye d'chol beit Yisrael v'agala v'izman kari v'yimru amen yehe shemei rabba mevarach v'alam olamei almaya yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit ramam v'yit nase v'yit hadar v'yit tale v'yit talal Shemed Kurisha Berichu, Leela Min Kol Birchata Vishirata, Tush Bachata Venechamata, Damiran Bealma Vimru Amen, Yehe Shalama Rabba Min Shemaya, Bechayi Malenu Veal Ko Yisrael, Vimru Amen, O Se Shalom Bimromav, Hu Ya Se Shalom, Alenu Veal Ko Yisrael, Vimru Amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to all Israel and all people everywhere. And let us say, Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to invite up our board member, Jose Benre, who is going to greet, give greetings and a few announcements. Shabbat Shalom, Jose. Shabbat Shalom. I have a few brief announcements. Congratulations to the Moskowitz and Greenberg families on the occasion of Logan's Bar Mitzvah tomorrow morning and Sydney's Bat Mitzvah tomorrow afternoon. Thank you to both families for sponsoring today's Oneg. Um, what time would you like your guests here in the morning? 9.45 for the morning and the afternoon? 4.15 for the afternoon. So be on time. This Sunday, sharp. This Sunday, October 28th at 1.30 p p.m., there will be a historical marker dedication ceremony here at Temple Beth Shalom honoring cultural impresario Judy Drucker. Anybody with more information can see Phyllis. She has these sheets. Sorry? Okay. <laughs> she can give you more. This cup, I'm sorry. That is not true. I apologize. She doesn't know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on something. <laughs> this coming Tuesday, October 30th at 6.30 p.m., there will be an informational meeting in the boardroom to discuss the upcoming summer trip to Israel with Rabbi Pomerantz at Cantor Siegel. If you're thinking of going to Israel, please be sure to attend this meeting. Next Friday, November 2nd, there will be a special Israeli-style onig with assorted Israeli desserts to celebrate with Make-A-Wish Foundation, Israel Foundation. Please plan to attend and hear some personal stories regarding this wonderful organization. Then the big event two weeks from tonight, when we will celebrate the amazing milestone of Rabbi Pomerantz's installation on November the 9th. Please be sure to join us for this very special evening and installation service of Rabbi Gail Pomerantz as the third senior rabbi in the Temple Beth Shalom's history. There will be a pre-neg at 5.15, followed by Kabbalat Shabbat service at 6 p.m. There will also be a fest festive reception to follow. Since we're expecting a very large crowd, please be sure to RSVP your attendance by November the 1st on the temple's website. Now, Phyllis. On Wednesday, November 14th at 6.30, the Sisters in the Hood will hold their Hanukkah Habayib gathering where Grace Sherman will teach how to make glass mezuzahs. If you're planning to attend, please register on the temple's website. And like I said, Phyllis can tell you more about that. I just got off a plane. And finally, I'll take a little bit of personal privilege. I had the pleasure of being with Rabbi Glickstein 48 hours ago to watch my daughter perform her practicum at Hebrew Union College in New York. Unfortunately, Joni could not be with us because she's here in Miami enjoying grandma babysitting duties. It was a wonderful morning and a wonderful event, even though in the middle of everyone uh, received a text message to shelter in place due to a bomb threat. As it turned out, it was a CNN event. I'm happy to report that Rabbi and Joni will be here two weeks from tonight to celebrate Rabbi Pomerantz's installation, and so will my daughter. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Jose. Now I'd like to call Phyllis up to give the sermon. No. 
<laughs> Shabbat shalom, everyone. <clears throat> uh, so we're barely, we're barely 20 chapters into the Torah. We just started reading the Torah again. We're barely 20 chapters into the Torah, and already we have more conflict. The Torah is filled with an enormous amount of conflict. We got Adam and Eve having problems, Cain and Abel. We have the whole Noah story, then the Tower of Babel, Sodom and Gomorrah. And then in this Torah portion as well, we have Abraham's difficulty with his first son, difficulty with his second son. There's a lot of issues in our Torah. We, we have issues, not just us, but our past has issues, and the future will too, and we're working on it. This, this evening, I want to connect uh, three different events that occur in our Torah that we've already read about or we're going to read about this week. The first one is the flood. We know the, the flood was uh, because there was great wickedness in the world, and this was a system reboot of the entire world, was this big flood, let's start all over again. And then we have the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, where those two cities are filled with a lot of wickedness and evil, and those cities are destroyed. We've got to reboot the cities. And then in this Torah portion, we have the almost sacrifice of Abraham's son, where we're dealing with not, a, not the whole world, not a city, but we're dealing with what happens between two people, and in, one, in this specific case, what happens with, with Isaac. We find ourselves in constant conflict in the Torah. Some of us still find ourselves in constant conflict with wicked people in the world and societies dealing with wicked societies as well. The Torah focuses on these conflicts and highlights the struggle to remind us and to ask us to think about how do we respond to these difficulties. It's not just about telling stories about wickedness and evil. What, do, what does it have to do with us? Most of us, I would argue, especially if you're a member of Temple Beth Shalom, most of us are actively doing good. There are some people that are actively doing bad, and some are caught in the middle watching. And that's what my focus, I want to share a few words with you about those people that watch, that are bystanders. <clears throat> the cities that we read about in this week's Torah portion are called Sodom and Gomorrah. And we're taught in the Midrash that they were settled by some really bad guys and ladies as well. So who were these bad people that settled into these cities? Well, we've got the flood. We know about Noah and the people that were on the ark. Noah was considered the most righteous in his generation. But did anyone survive the flood? So the Midrash says that there were at least two people, it might have been more, but they think there was at least two people that survived the flood outside of the ark. They swam for 40 nights and 40 days. Can you imagine that? These were some, <clears throat> I, I can't even swim a lap. Uh, the Midrash, uh, I'm not sure what the, uh, how to translate the word, but in English I'll use, they were riffraff. These were some, these were some guys that were, I mean, you swim for 40 nights and 40 days, they're tough, tough crowd, but they were the wicked ones. They were supposed to be destroyed in this big system reboot, but somehow they still managed to survive. And now we end up reading about them again in this week's Torah portion, because where did they settle? The Midrash says in Sodom and Gomorrah. The survivors of the flood, not the ones on the boat, they settled in Sodom and Gomorrah. These were selfish people. These were not good people and it was not a good mix of citizens. And yet, they were rich. They had, a lot of, they had a lot of prosperity. Everyone that lived in these cities had plenty of food. They had nice film, uh, homes filled with everything they needed, including flowers, which were considered to be a great uh, luxury. If you could have the time to grow flowers, it was an amazing thing. They had flowers and they had tree, beautiful trees. But rather than being willing to share their wealth and good fortune with their neighbors, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah wanted to keep everything for themselves. They welcomed no one, no immigrants, no travelers. <clears throat> they chased away the sick. They threw out the poor. Anyone that they perceived would be a burden to their city, they threw out. But according to the rabbis, 
Their selfishness went even a step further. They developed ways of stealing from others without breaking the law. In the Talmud, we learn that when a stranger entered the gates of these cities of Sodom and Gomorrah with grain, everyone in the city would steal only a few grains, like going to Whole Foods, you know, and I'll just take that olive. They would only steal a few grains. More than an olive? Okay. <laughs> they would each only steal a few grains from the bag until the grain was all gone. That way, no one individual could be taken to court for stealing. And if the visitor took a resident of the city to court for taking his grain, the judge would say to him, what did you do? He said, I just took an olive. It was just an olive. Really, you're going to arrest me in Whole Foods for taking an olive? They just took a few grains. But the inhabitants of the city took it even a step further. They created laws forbidding any citizen of Sodom and Gomorrah from feeding the hungry or offering out to the poor or healing of the sick. The great evil of Sodom and Gomorrah was that cruelty became public policy. Cruelty became public policy. It wasn't just an accident. The leaders made oppression and abuse part of the way of life, and there was no place to receive justice. The courts weren't a safe place for anyone. According to the uh, great commentator Ibn Ezra, he said, not one citizen of these cities protested the cruel treatment of strangers. Instead, they remained silent. They chose the safety of not getting involved. They refused to serve in public office or try to change the evil laws <clears throat> that had been passed. Well, these cities got destroyed. Abraham bargains with God to save maybe 10 people. So what happened to those 10 people? Well, two of those 10, the Midrash says, were the two that survived swimming in that wickedness, uh, the, from the wickedness of before Noah, and then they ended up in this wicked city. So what happened to these two? These two guys weren't all good. They weren't all evil. They just were there. So Abraham and Isaac now become the central focus of the narrative. Abraham hears the divine call to continue the process of cruelty by sacrificing his son, human sacrifice. He takes his son, his only son. He takes the wood for the sacrificial fire, and he takes the big knife to plunge into his son. And he takes his two servants with him. Who were the two servants? These two guys. These two guys. And he takes his servants and his son to go up to the mountain to sacrifice his son. And in a pivotal moment for these two servants, Abraham says, <clears throat> Stay here with the donkeys. And that's what they did. Now, Abraham, the rest of the sentence is, and we will go and worship, and we will return. So the Midrash says, perhaps the servants understand that Abraham would take his son, would worship, and then return with his son, meaning it was going to be some sort of different kind of worship. But we know that the worship was supposed to happen was for he was going to sacrifice his son. Or the Midrash says that the text suggests Abraham would worship, meaning sacrifice his son, and then Abraham would return to his servants hanging with the donkey, and then he, Abraham, and his servants would leave. How did these two servants respond? Just like they did in Noah's generation. They sat and did nothing while Noah built that boat, except then they swam. And just like in Sodom and Gomorrah, they sat and did nothing when that evilness in those cities was being propagated, except at the end, run. And when Abraham goes to sacrifice his son, they repeated this behavior again. They sat and did nothing with the donkey. Dear friends, the question is not, who were these guys, and why did they do something or not do something? Rather, the question, the text demands of us 
what will we do next? What will we do? Will we swim? Will we run? Will we hide? Will we be so blessed that we have beautiful flowers and trees? Or will we look around and see that this world is not yet filled with beautiful flowers and trees for everyone, not even for many? On this Shabbat, let us not sit with those who do nothing. Rather, let us be among the kind and the righteous of the world, giving voice and vote and hope to all those in need of justice and mercy, including ourselves. Sometimes we have to speak up for ourselves as well. May it be God's will that we don't sit and do nothing, but rather that we get up off of our donkeys and make a change for ourselves and for the world. Amen. Let's rise and we're going to sing together this song, Olam, Olam Chesed Yevaneh, which is found inside the Shabbat program. Olam Chesed Yevaneh, Shalom.